Thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, we're gonna give a couple minutes or a couple seconds for everyone to move from the waiting room to the user group. So we'll get started very shortly. Hello and welcome to today's virtual user group. My name is Haley Halstead and I'm a product marketing manager here at Smartsheet. I'm joined today by Peter Monkhaus and Joanna Tivik, both instructors and authors of Gen P, as well as Amin and Anubria from Execute Strategy, a Smartsheet Platinum partner. To provide some context, the Smartsheet user group program has been created in response to Smartsheet users who have been requesting more opportunities to connect and learn from each other. Therefore, we launched the user group program to enable just that. Because our audience is located across a wide region and many folks are currently working remotely, we are having today's user group virtually, so we're not limited by geographic location. Before we get going, I'd like to give a hearty thank you to everyone for attending today. We're working our way through some remarkably challenging times right now. We further pass on sincere hope that you and your loved ones are able to stay healthy, safe, and stress-free during these times. So let's dive into the agenda. Today's group is specifically focused on smart sheet use by those of you interested in product development. Joanna and Peter will be sharing with us their story of how they're using Smartsheet. Then we'll have some time for a live Q&A and then um, a demo by Execute Strategy. Because we have lots of folks attending, everyone is gonna be muted for this webinar in the beginning. Feel free to type your questions into the Q&A section though, and I have a colleague who's helping answer them throughout the event. Um, and if we don't get to your questions live, we'll be following up shortly after. Um, and as a heads up, this virtual user group is scheduled for 45 minutes in duration and will be recorded. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Amin to share with us who Execute Strategy is and what they do. Thank you, Haley, and welcome everyone. We have a large contingent who has joined us today, so thank you for attending this virtual webinar. Uh, and uh, Execute Strategy is truly honored uh, to uh, have an opportunity to have a partnership with Smartsheet and co-hosting this webinar today. Uh, what I will do now is uh, walk through two simple slides on sharing with you how Execute Str Strategy is supporting uh, our clients and our potentials in achieving more uh, on their business solutions. So let's get started. Educate Strategy is truly a in business of empowering organizations to achieve more. And we do this through best practices in people, in process, and in tools, and in relating these to getting work done. We are a Smartsheet Platinum partner for over six years now, and we have major implementations of Smartsheet across North America. Specifically, our Smartsheet services include pre built solutions that will accelerate your implementation. Given our years of work and experience in Smartsheet, we have built solutions in every vertical so that when you engage with our team for your Smartsheet solution, we bring with, you, with us these proven templates that are ready to configure and to customize to your needs, saving you and your team significant time and money. Our team also has technical expertise in integrating third-party solutions and applications to Smartsheet to provide you a full end-to-end -end solutions for your business pain points. Besides implementation of your solution, we offer in-class and virtual instructor-led training through public courses or customized specifically for your team. To further the adoption of Smartsheet, we also offer meetups, webinars, and user groups such as these in person and virtually in partnership with Smartsheet. To look up for future upcoming events, you can register at our site for the next event. And in addition to hosting Smartsheet, Smartsheet virtual groups, user groups, we also host a Smartsheet Canada user group on LinkedIn, where you get first access to new features and tips. Today, as a thank you for all the attendees attending, we're offering a 30% discount on our virtual instructor-led training with hands-on exercises. Each attendee of the training session will receive a certificate and the courses are PDU eligible. 
In addition to our work management practices, we are a full professional services company with the following established services as you can see on the screen. These include business process optimization, organizational change management, project management maturity, training, business analysis and business case development, staffing services, hands-on delivery of key strategic projects, and competency and skills assessment for your team. So why execute? We always put people and process first before implementing your solution. Uh, we are an organization that has strong, similar uh, implementations across various industries of Smartsheet. And we have over 10 certified Smartsheet consultants to work with your team. And as all boats rise with the tide, our commitment to helping local charities uh, provides that support uh, to local communities where we work and operate. So we provide 5% of our profits in time, in knowledge sharing, and in dollars to lo local charities. Given the COVID scenario, we are offering free discovery session for your Smartsheet solution to any organization that has been impacted with COVID and are part, is part of an essential service please write to us and contact us at smartsheet at executestrategy.ca for us to get in touch with you and your team. In addition, we offer third-party integration, as mentioned earlier, to all of these tools that are listed on the screen. There are some related to, to Smartsheet directly and others that are third-party SaaS tools that connect seamlessly with Smartsheet. I will now like to introduce today's keynote speakers. Peter Monkhaus and Joanna Tivik are authors of Gen P, New Generation of Product Owners Who Care About Customers, and it's a best-selling book on Amazon. The book Gen P focuses on practical examples and methods of creating successful products with a specific focus on customers. Peter is an entrepreneur and strategic leader, working on delivering business value in both for-profit and non-for-profit organizations. Peter is also an instructor with the University of Toronto and an active volunteer with the Project Management Institute, including being the past chair of the Project Management Institute's board. Joanna Tivig has worked on various enterprise agile transformations with a focus on executing digital strategies and building agile practices for high performing teams. Joanna is an instructor as well with the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies and an active member of the Toronto Agile community and the organizer of various Agile events. With this, I would like to welcome and pass it on to Peter Monkhaus. Thank you very much, Amin, and thank you to all of those who are attending this session. So I would like to just spend a few minutes to talk about some of the challenges that we're seeing that organizations are facing today and their products. We'll then talk about one of the solutions that organizations can use and product owners can use to help address some of these challenges through an iterative development approach, which will involve creating backlogs and using a Smartsheet. Okay, so let's get started with some of the challenges. So as we were preparing to write the book, uh, as Amin mentioned, Gen P, we did some research about the challenges that products were being faced. And what we saw were that products are failing. Now we have felt this, Joanna and I felt this as we looked around, but we did the research and we found a number of studies that supported this. So I've shown some of them here. So Clayton Christensen uh, from Harvard, who unfortunately passed away back in January, you know, did a study that showed about 80% of consumer products failed in their first year. You know, this is, he looked at a, over 30,000 products. Isa Blackburn, a professor at University of Toronto, looked at grocery products saying that 70 to 80% of them failed. And these are remarkably high numbers. So um, George Castellonian and uh, Stefan Markham didn't necessarily believe this, so they tried and did a more scientific study and about the product failures, and they came up with 40% of the products fail, which is still a really, really high number. So we've seen, and of course, I've shown here the logos of examples that most of us are familiar with, of Kodak, who missed the switch from from photography, chemical based to digital, and Sears, who's struggling in the retail space, how, how their products were not being successful, 
and thus led to problems for the organization struggling to survive. And of course, all these studies were before COVID-19 came into our world, and we're seeing now even more organizations, especially those that are based in the retail space, are struggling to survive, figuring out how to, to deal with things in today's marketplace. Next slide, please. So why are there challenges out here? So there are a number of challenges that are around. We've basically divided them into three main groups. So the first is around diversity. So this is diversity in competitors and customers, as well as our staff. Now, diversity can be a positive thing for many organizations. It will allow them to reach customers all over the world. Right, and be able to go out and sell their products through the, the internet to customers wherever they happen to be. And with the remarks of today's um, supply chains and, and courier services, you can actually get your product, sometimes at a price, but to any to customer anywhere in the world. So that's the good news. But the bad news is your competitors are no longer the store around the corner or down the street. It's an organization anywhere in the world who can come and approach your customers just as, as easily as you can approach their customers. So this raises challenges for organizations, for organizations to face. Second is technology, and is particularly disruptive technology. We've seen examples, well, I've already mentioned Kodak with digital uh, photography. We've had Uber coming in the taxi cab industry. We've had Airbnb with the hotel industry. Right. There's been a number of examples of where we've had technology that's come in that has changed the way that we do business. And of course, talking about retail stores and Amazon, and retail stores Sears, Amazon has been one of the biggest ones, you know, as we can all now sit in the comfort of our homes and order products and services to come to our house. I find it amazing how things are just showing up these days. And this is causing problems with kind of how to keep up with technology and how to keep evolving our products and services that we offer to customers to deal with new technologies. And then the last one is new business models, somewhat related to both of these. But if we look at the of, of companies um, such as Kodak, you know, why did Kodak not embrace digital photography? They invented it. Well, they couldn't figure out how to make money on digital photography because they made money through chemicals. So, but people have figured out how you make money on digital photography, how you can sell value added services, how you can use it to buy, to help enhance other products such as cell phones. So companies are coming in with new ways of using technology, new ways of making money, of delivering value to customers and different business models, which companies have to adapt to and shift away from their old methods. So with all this happening, what can we look at and how can we do things? So one of the things that we started with, with our book to look, think about is this idea of implementing strategy and how that is done and how that can be done to deal with the challenges that organizations are facing. So organizations are generally very good at developing a strategy. They're not so good at implementing it or executing on their strategy. So this simple circle will sort of explain how this will work. So we start off with the strategy. We then will create strategic objectives and strategic initiatives, which are things that our projects are really good at. Projects are good at taking these initiatives to create products and services. Products and services will deliver value to customers. Customers can provide feedback about the value they're getting, which is what will recognize by organizations as being the benefits being realized and thus achieving their strategy, or maybe not. And in that case, they can update their strategy, refine their objectives, create new strategic initiatives and projects, update products, and the circle repeats itself as this continuous cycle of feedback coming back. The point that we're seeing here, what's important for product owners to realize and organizations to realize is that projects deliver products and it's products that deliver value to customers and thus help the organization achieve their strategic objectives. Okay, so I'd like to now turn over to Joanna who will talk a little bit about more about how as product owners, 
we can look at an iterative development approach to actually deliver our products. Joanna? Thank you, Peter. So now let's see the different approaches to implement the strategy. So in this picture, you will see the traditional product life cycle. This could be one of the approaches. This is a graph from Boston Consulting Group. Um, it's a linear representation and you can see here question marks are ideas that can be transformed into new products. Uh, the stars are the, the products that have features and that add value to customers. Uh, cash cows are mature products that are reaching maximum market or profit potential. Uh, and dogs are products that are at the end of their life and they are losing market share and profitability and eventually will be retired. So when you can see a product is evolving from an idea to a retired product through this life cycle. But the problem is that with the challenges described by Peter, organizations have difficulties with this approach because they cannot react to change fast enough. And this model is linear and is more appropriate for predictable markets. So if we go to the next page, this is where the iterative product life cycle approach becomes more appropriate. And this is where uh, this iterative approach is guided by three main phases. The first one is to identify a customer problem. And we always start with that. We need to understand the pains the customers have, the problems that they have, so we can find solution for them and opportunities. Once we have a solution, the next phase is market validation and test it with a minimum viable product. So you can see that it's fit in the market and customers are interested in. The MVP is a key concept for this iterative approach because it represents the minimum set of features that need to be included in a product to deliver value to them, to the customers. And the last phase is an agile execution where you can continue to develop features for this product so they can reach the maturity and deliver maximum value. So we will see here that, you know, this is an iterative approach and you can go back to all of the phases if you need to. So if we go to the next page, this is where you can see the iterative product lifecycle in details. So you can see the three phases that we discussed at the bottom of the each cycle. The customer problem phase starts with the idea and the idea should identify a potential product or service that will address or support the organization strategy that Peter talked about. Once there is an idea, the next step is to identify the value that is going to be delivered to potential customers. Then possible solutions are identified and a solution is selected that can deliver that value to customers. Once that's done, the team creates a minimum viable product that we discussed and the MVP should be tested in the market through a proof of concept. Also to prove that the solution works prior to launching it um, more widely into the market. The proof of concept will be represented by a prototype which is released and validated with a customer and needs to make sure that it meets the customer's expectations. So the, the whole idea here will be to get feedback from customers. So you can enhance the MVP and you can also go back to the idea and change it if you need to. Only then you can actually put together a product backlog that is prepared and has all the execution features. Um, and then those features can be planned into sprints or iterations and you can select those features that will be delivered, that will be built and released in the hands of the customers. So now I'd like to summarize uh, the two advantages uh, in using an iterative approach over a traditional one. And the first is that you're creating that MVP that we talked about and you minimize investment in a product that if potentially fails, you haven't spent too much on. And you can test it in the market first and see if it is feasible. Second, it allows for the additional features to be added to the backlog because you're getting feedback from your customers. So you incorporate that feedback back into your backlog and you keep your product relevant. So if you want to know more about this, I want to remind you that we have a great book and a great online course that will explain all these concepts and more. So 
Now let's go to the next page. This is an illustration of a product backlog, and this is a key feature of that iterative uh, uh, product lifecycle approach. And you can see here that the features uh, of the backlog are prioritized in iterations or sprints. And the key is that at the end of, of each iteration, there is a product increment that is delivered to the customer and that adds value. So in this example, we're building a travel website. In the first iteration, we prioritize the most value add features like login, logout, uh, display trip and print trip. There are the features that need to be delivered first to customers to be able to use the product. In, in the second iteration, we are adding two features, update a trip and share the trip with others. And in iteration three, um, we, we're adding more features and we thought to add send alerts to the users. So we completed all the, the features in the backlog. Uh, the, the idea is that you can release the features to the customers at the end of each iteration, or you can do it as a combined release of multiple iterations. That's up to the product owner and to the team to decide. And of course, most of the backlogs have hundreds of features and can go for many iterations. So this is just an example. So you can use any tool to build a product backlog and prioritize features. I personally like Smartsheets uh, because it's a tool where you can easily build a backlog, you can prioritize features in iterations, and you can show progress to your executive team through some amazing dashboards. So I will pass it on to Anupriya to show us how Smartsheet and Jira Connect work together. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, before I start the demo, I request you all to submit your question and answer using the Q&A portal. We will try to address all of them today, but if you're not able to get to them, we will definitely reach out to you over email to answer your questions. I've got one question here, which uh, where somebody has asked me how to count the number of instances of data in Smartsheet. So for that, you can use a count or a count of statement. Now moving to the Jira demo. This right here is a Smartsheet Jira connector. How this works is this helps you connect a Jira project, which is, as we all know, Jira is the most used software by all the product managers across the world. Now this tool helps me connect Jira with Smartsheet. Now, for, for the purposes of this demo, I have created a smart uh, a Jira project, which defines all my epics, prints, and backlogs. What I will do here using the connector is connect it with a, G, uh, with a Smartsheet instance. Now, it's a pretty simple workflow. To add a workflow, you need to select a sheet in Smartsheet, or you can create new right here. And you need to create a Jira project. Now I can I I am the system admin for two different Jira instances. I can select all the projects on one server or a different project on a different server. Now this really helps me in creating a bi-directional or a unidirectional relationship between the fields in Jira and Smartsheet columns. Now the fields that you see on the left are your Jira, Jira fields or Jira variables. You can map the same to Smartsheet columns and you can select whether it should be a bi-directional push of data or a unidirectional push of data. You can also delete the fields that you feel won't add any value to your Smartsheet instance. You can also add new fields, even the custom defined fields in Jira to this list. And if you don't have a column assigned, you can just select a new column and it will create a column in your Smartsheet for this particular field. Now, the good thing here is you can add as many filters from Jira to this instance and only those who meet, meet the filter criteria would be added to Smartsheet. You can also add custom JQLs as filters. You can also define Smartsheet filters or Smartsheet columns, which can be used as filters here. Now to show you what an implemented workflow looks like, 
this gives me the Jira instance and the Smartsheet and the last time that this was run. I can click on these links to directly access the Jira project or the Smartsheet instance. Now this is what an implemented project in Smartsheet looks like. Now this is the same Jira board. This was the Jira board that we had with all the sprints and the epics and the backlog, which is now imported into Smartsheet. Any changes done to Jira would be reflected in Smartsheet and vice versa. So let's say that I move this particular instance to in progress. Let me refresh it. This should now be reflected on the Smartsheet page. Now this was the instance which was in to do. While it's getting refreshed, you can see here that this run date would also change when the instance is updated. Now, if you see that, it's now changed to in progress. The change that I made on Jira is getting reflected in Smartsheet. Now, what's the benefit of providing this information, the same information that you have on Jira, why do I need to put it on Smartsheet? The benefit is on a project or a portfolio level, there is a certain number of information that as a developing as a development team doesn't need to be bothered with. There, are, there is a certain level of information which only the uh, only which is only required on the portfolio level. So I can add any number of rows and columns here, which are not to be reflected in Jira, but I need that particular information on a project level. For example, the budget. I probably don't need the budget for my development team, but as a portfolio manager or as a product manager, I need that particular information. Now, you can also show this particular data in a Kanban board style if that's how you are running your project. We can also create dashboards for each of these projects, each of these Jira projects. These dashboards are highly customizable and intuitive. They are also dynamic. So for example, if I don't want to focus on a particular parameter, I can just delete it right here. I can also add custom summary reports on my dashboard. So as a product manager, this is a one-stop shop where I can see everything that I want related to the project. Now, this particular project can also be combined with all other non-Jira projects that are being run. For example, let's say I have a project which is just for IT infrastructure update, which is a non-Jira project, which is a one-time setup. But I do want to know what's going on on each of my project. So I can combine all this data into a portfolio dashboard. Now my portfolio right now has three particular projects. Two of them are product development projects and third one is an IT infrastructure project. I can click on all of these to figure out in which stage my particular project is. Let's say I want to see what my non-Jira project is going on. So I can go on my non-Jira project, see whatever is going on, see the tasks which are in progress, see what the overview of the project is. I can also have an overview of the portfolio in terms of other metrics or other KPIs that I want to report on. So let's say I just want to focus on high and medium priority product issues right now, we, I can do that right here and report on different other KPIs as well. I can also create summaries and that irrespective of how many projects I run. So with this, uh, this was an overview of how Smartsheet works with Jira and how you can use it to the best. Now I will hand it over back to Amin to take you through the different models. Thank you, Anupriya, for your time, and uh, Peter and Joanna for a great presentation. Uh, so for today, uh, as we get into the Q&A session, and before we start the Q&A session, we ask that you, uh, you put in uh, any of your questions that you may have uh, in the Q&A uh, link that is at the bottom of the screen, uh, and we will be uh, sequencing them as they're, as they're coming in. Uh, for our attendees for the session today, today uh, in partnership with Smartsheet and with the author of the book, Gen P, we have three offers for you. 
Uh, the first offer is provided by Execute Strategy. We're providing a free solution review, um, free solution review of your Smartsheet uh, work management solution. Uh, you need to simply click on the QR code and uh, submit your request. The first 10 requests will receive uh, a free access code to the Smartsheet Center of Excellence, uh, which is the Smartsheets Foundation online virtual training. And it's $199 uh, value. Um, so uh, we are looking forward to connecting with you and your team to review your uh, Smartsheet solution. Please reach out to us and this is a free offer that we're providing to all attendees of this session. Second, um, as mentioned earlier, we're giving a 30% off on our public Smartsheet virtual training courses. Um, the, there are two courses, one is an expert training and one is a, a project management uh, with Smartsheet training, it's 30% off. Uh, no discount code required, simply scan the QR code. The prices are already uh, uh, discounted on the site. Uh, please register by May 15th. The first course is last week of May and the, the second one is in the first week of June. And we're looking forward to hosting you. All attendees will receive a certificate and courses are eligible for PMI PDUs. The third offer is from our keynote speakers today, the authors of the best-selling Gen P book. Uh, they're offering half off of their product owners course, uh, which is an online virtual course uh, that uh, Joanna alluded to in her presentation. Uh, again, simply scan that QR code uh, and uh, express your interest and you will be um, uh, sent, uh, send the link uh, for, the, uh, for the discount and the, for the, for the course. Uh, all of these offers will also be sent as part of the uh, uh, thank you for attending the event. There'll be a thank you message and a recording message sent out uh, over the next few days. Uh, but we wanted for you to have an opportunity to access them immediately. With this, I wanted to thank everyone for attending today's session on behalf of all of us. I will now pass the uh, session over to our moderator, James Allen uh, or Haley from Smartsheet, who will facilitate our Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joanna and Peter and uh, Amin and Nupriya for presenting today. Um, we have some questions coming through. So, um, and if you have any other questions you'd like to have answered, feel free to type it into the Q&A section. Okay, um, so the first question uh, for Peter, in an ever-changing fast-paced environment, um, how can teams be back on track for technology and business model and adapting constantly? Uh, thank you, and thank you, Seb, for the question. Um, so I will give two points and let Joanna add, if she wishes, to them. So the first thing is, as the technology is changing so quickly and rapidly, we're certainly recommending that organizations think about shorter iterations. This allows them to adapt to what's happening in the changing environment, because at every iteration, as Joanna explained, we're going back to looking at the backlog so that we can then see what feature we should be putting in the next iteration of our product. So shorter iterations or first approach. Second one is the role of a product owner and product ownership in an organization. That, you know, we found that when we think about the agile and the scrum approach where you have a product owner as the voice of the customer on a development team, but that's not the full role of a product owner. That's part of their role to certainly guide the development team to make sure they understand what the customer is experiencing, what they want the customer to experience. But the product owner also needs to be thinking strategically of how does the product help their organization be successful? How is it going to help their customers be successful by delivering value? And what features are their customers need to help solve the problems they have and thus deliver value? What, and what's going on in the marketplace what are the changing business models? What are the changing technology that can be used to be adapted to their product to help them become more successful and then bring that into the product backlog? And I think as organizations narrow the focus of a product owner just to this agile development approach, they're missing this part. They're missing the strategic part of what a product owner should be doing and being involved with. Joanna, anything you want to add? Yeah, I'd like to add something in terms of, you can see even today what's happening on the market with COVID-19, um, how some organizations have, were, were very adaptable and they changed their business models quickly. And I think it was because they were working into 
um, cycles, they were more prone to have adaptable processes as well. And when you do that, then, you know, it's easier to switch gears. And um, what I also recommend to organizations is instead of focusing on technology and then starting um, their business models from there, use technology as an enabler. So basically you're not focusing um, 100% in technology transformation. You use technology as an enabler for your business. So your business should transform first. Great, and I like that you mentioned uh, COVID-19. We do have a question. Um, can you dive a little bit deeper into how you think the current COVID-19 situation will impact product? Okay, I'll start again and let Joanna miss it, pick up anything that I missed. So as Joanna mentioned that this idea of being able to adapt to the changing marketplace, and this is what we're seeing with the COVID-19 how organizations are or not able to adapt. So we've seen examples where, or, where distilleries are now making hand sanitizers. People with plastic mold injectors are now making face shields. Garment makers are now making uh, per personal protection equipment, PPE. That these organizations have been able to adapt, right? Because they recognize the, the needs of their customers have changed and they're willing to deal with that. The organizations which are struggling with having a model where they don't understand what, how to adapt, they don't understand what the value of the customers are, are struggling. And you know, it just reminds us as a, to the earlier question is, you have to keep your, iterate, your iterations short, you have to constantly get feedback. You know, we've seen in some cases, organizations may not have had the right answer right off the, the bat when, they came out, they still kept trying to do the same thing, but they learned, right, as they've gotten feedback. Uh, Joanna, do you, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think um, I would also add the decision-making process. So you can see that because there are, the, the, the things are changing so fast and so um, uh, rapidly, you need to have a, a mechanism and a process where your decisions are made faster. So you can see that those organizations that are very hierarchical, that they go through levels of approvals are struggling to make those decisions while others, you know, that are more flat organizations, um, they can make those decisions and they can move forward faster. Thank you, great. Um, we do have a good product question that came in. Uh, my team already uses products such as Jira or Trello. How can Smartsheets uh, connected to these products help our team? I'll, I'll take that uh, question. You know, so Smartsheet is a work management tool that allows our teams to manage and report on their, on their work. While agile tools such as Jira and, uh, Jira and Trello um, allow teams and development teams uh, to use the tool that where they work best. And what the connectors are for Smartsheet with tools like Jira, and then there is a import facility for all the Trello boards into Smartsheet as well, uh, that our team can um, provide a demo uh, if you like. Uh, if, what, these th what these connectors do is allow the development teams to use the tools that, that they use on a day-to-day -day basis and continue to manage and track on their work, uh, while for some organizations uh, and leaders in the organizations, even though the, the teams, development teams and product teams have moved to more of an agile approach, the reporting on work and tracking on work is still more, requires a structure and still more waterfallish, if you will. Uh, and in addition, there are a lot of initiatives and projects that have dependent tasks. For example, there are tasks to implement and roll out the project that are more sequential and not agile when you're doing a deployment. There are tasks that are related to infrastructure requirements, for example, procuring server space uh, and, uh, and development space. These are more linear type tasks that are managed outside of a more agile uh, work stream. So product managers and those that are in the role of managing the work of the teams then need to look for management tools and reporting tools to be able to do that. What Smartsheet does is that it sits 
essentially uh, outside the core of these agile tools and allows uh, those individuals that are responsible for managing and reporting on the work uh, for these st structured tasks and non uh, and linear tasks allows them an ability and a platform to integrate agile tasks and also non agile tasks in a one platform apply work management uh, and business rules such as tracking reminders notifications and automation uh, to manage that work and then also use the the reporting and the dashboard capability and capacity that Smartsheet offers out of the box uh, to be able to report on that work uh, to various levels of the, of the organization. In addition, for portfolio leads and portfolio managers where they may have, a, um, they may have an agile project and a non-agile project, Smartsheet allows the ability for them to combine those projects and have one view of the portfolio uh, for various portfolio level requirements, such as resources, budgets, uh, and tracking of those items. So hope that's helpful. And thank you for answer, asking that question. Great, and then let's um, do one more question. Um, this question is for Joanna. In the model of iterative life cycle, how can we use data points for market fit and what data points are key indicators for success of the market fit? This is a great question because I think this is the key of, of testing the market. So you can get some data um, and um, from there you can iterate even more. So you definitely want to use the data to um, define or further clarify your personas. So even if you had some personas defined uh, before you went to the market, now it's time to refine the personas. Um, you can also refine your journey maps. So you can go through all the levels of the journey maps and see, um, focus on the, on the customer pains and see how you can address those. Um, there are surveys there that you can do. The net promoter score for sure will give you um, some interesting data in terms of if, if customers are buying and if they are promoting your product as well, if they are willing to refer it to friends and family. Um, you can definitely test all this, but focus on, on making sure that you address the pains and um, you also meet their values and their demands. So I don't know, Peter, if you have anything else to add. No, thank you, Joanna. Yes, thank you so much. Um, we are right at time and we want to be respectful of everyone's time today. So thank you very much, Peter, Joanna, Amin, and Anupriya for joining us today. And thank you um, to all of you for attending and participating. Um, we hope you found some inspiration in today's group and an opportunity to learn more about what other groups are doing. Um, so after today, you will be receiving a follow-up email with a form. And if there's anything that you'd like to see in the next virtual user group or in person once we have them, we'd love to hear your feedback. So with that, um, have a great rest of your day and thank you for tuning in today.